When you fall asleep at night, you don't expect to have to relive the tragic events of your life. But for me, this is a regular occurrence, for I am constantly haunted by them. it's not easy. It's not easy going to bed every night just wondering if you're gonna wake up and find one of these drawings next to your bedstand, knowing the when and the where, and just being totally powerless to stop it. That's why I think I keep having these nightmares. You told me your journal was a collection of sketches. Well, yeah. I mean, during the day I just draw whatever pops in my mind. But the ones I find the next morning, I don't even remember doing those. Those are different. So you capture your thoughts. You mind if I borrow it till our next meeting? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I carry it with me wherever I go. Ernie, I think it might help us uncover the true nature of your anxiety. Uh, you can really learn a lot about someone through something like this. Uh, I guess it'd be all right if it's just for a week. Great, thanks. I took the liberty of calling a colleague of mine, a Dr. Peterson. He specializes in sleep therapy. I told him about your predicament, and he suggested we videotape your sleep pattern. You want to videotape me sleeping? That sounds a little strange, don't you think? When we met, you said you were open to any of my methods or suggestions, and I really think this will help. All right, if you think it'll help, then yeah, let's give it a shot. I want you to do this for the next three nights. All you have to do is press play and then drop the tapes off at the office the next day and I'll analyze them before our next meeting. And record. Sorry Ernie, we didn't find anything out of the ordinary on the tapes. Here's your journal back. I hope you don't mind, but I scanned the pictures into my computer. Oh, not at all. From what I saw, your drawing style is very sensitive and creative. Do you, do you enjoy drawing? Yeah, I do. It's kind of just a hobby right now, but someday I'd like to be more serious about it. Has there ever been an artist in your family? Yeah, actually, my mom. Yeah, she was a high school art teacher. She was always encouraging my creative side. You know, she's actually the one that gave me my first journal. How about your father? My dad? That guy was all business, nothing more. He discouraged my talent to say the least. You know, he'd always say things like, why are you wasting your time with that crap? And why don't you do something with your life? If only he could have appreciated the drawings I drew for him. Things might have been different. Just to say, I never saw eye to eye with a man. And apparently my mom didn't either, because later that year, she filed for divorce. Did the divorce affect you? Well, it was certainly quieter with him gone. Mom didn't have anyone to fight with. But, you know, that's when all this started happening. That's when the nightmares began.
Good morning, sweetie. How did you sleep? Okay, I guess. What do you have there? It's a picture of two cars, and they're gonna crash. Why would you draw something like that? Ernie? One of the people in the car is you, Mom. No, no. Why do you say that, sweetie? See, it looks just like you. I don't want you to go. Listen, Ernie, I will drive really safe for you today, okay? But I am late and I really have to get going now. I'll see you when you get off of the bus today. Okay. That was the last time I ever saw my mom alive. I knew something bad was gonna happen, and I did nothing. I did nothing. I could have saved her. So, after the crash, they threw me into foster care. Never felt like I belonged anymore. But then I met my friend Quinn. He was a guy I could trust. You know, he's the only person who's ever believed in me. All besides you, of course. Ernie, I, I didn't say that- Dr. Howe, I don't know how this is happening, but in the back of my mind, I know I'm the one drawing these pictures, but how can I draw something that's never happened before? then just have no recollection of ever doing it in the first place. Doc, you gotta help me understand what's going on. Let's, let's get another three nights of videotape. A collection agency? They told me they'd take care of this! What the hell? Good morning, West Michigan. I'm Nick Walker, and now for a late-breaking news bulletin. Firefighters are still extinguishing a blaze at Rosie Mound Home for the Elderly in Grand Haven. Investigators say the fire was started at 3 a.m. Typically, seven residents are confirmed dead. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Chief Edward Jackson stated hours ago that arson has not been ruled out. Now for a live news update. Here is Jill Thompson. So you found this yesterday? Did you know anybody who went to this home? Oh yeah, my grandma did, but she died a year ago. I haven't even been there since. Did you have any problems while she was staying there? No, not really, but after she died, I kept getting billed for her room. You know, the night before the fire, I got a notice in the mail saying that if I didn't pay up, they'd send a collection agency after me. Did you talk to them about this? A number of times. They always said they'd take care of it. I don't understand this dishonesty. Why do they have to lie? I think lying to yourself is even worse. You've never believed in me, have you? Ernie, everything I've analyzed about you over the past weeks checks out. You're a normal person, except what's in your own mind. You've convinced yourself that this is all real, that you can predict the future. So all that crap you said about Hey, I want to help you, and, oh, I understand. That wasn't true. Damn it, I only came here because I thought you believed in me. Ernie, there's something unique about you. I, I just can't put my finger on it. Look at all these pages, Doc. I make a distinct habit of dating my work, okay? Look, August 13th, 2006, I draw a picture of a school bus crashing. Hey, guess what? The very next day, a school bus does crash, killing all 28 kids. Look, here's another one. September 4th, 2006. Ernie, you probably saw these things and wrote them down in your journal as a way to cope with your unpleasant childhood. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean that you can foresee the future. 